Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. We are midway through August. The events of the Olympics have concluded. The summer is essentially over. Summer has pretty much concluded, at least in my mind. I would say like in a lot of people's minds, you can probably say that the summer is wrapped up. It's been wrapped up with the Olympics concluding, and this is all too much of a familiar feel for me. It takes me back to the time where you were a kid, and you were on summer vacation, and... um. It was time to go back to school, and you felt it coming. You felt the weather change, the demeanor, the mood of your friends change. Your parents reminding you that, hey, school's coming. Getting letters in the mail. Here's what you need to bring. If you're a bit older, like you say in college, you'd be getting emails, syllabuses, Um, lists of things you need to buy, textbooks, binders, paper, uh, calculators, protractors, rulers, bunch of shit that you're like, damn, it's going to cost me a penny to buy this shit. I know it's not not super expensive for that shit, but, you know, still you're like, fudge, man, I got to pay for all this crap and go to school and learn. When you're in summer vacation mode as a child, I feel like you're like in a mode where like you don't want to do anything. You know, you've at this point of the va- of the vacation, you probably have already had your family vacations, you've done your things. You celebrate the holidays. 4th of July has passed. August, there ain't really much going on except gearing up for back to school. Man, I could just take me back to those miserable, miserable days before you had to go back to school. Unbelievable. You know, it's it it really is, you know, a feeling that you don't like to experience. It's like a pit in your stomach. You know, you know it's coming. You know school's coming. You know learning is coming. Homework is coming. Tests are coming. Quizzes are coming. Exams are coming. Papers that you got to write are coming. And if you were in summer school up to this point, you're a nerd, first and foremost, but you're probably like, what, I've been going to school since, uh, you know, uh, June or July. We barely finished like two weeks ago. Like, man, shut the hell up. You know, for the rest of us, we were in our zen, in our bliss, in our moment as regular, normal people who enjoy summer vacation that don't or don't have to attend summer school and don't want to attend summer school. You know, we are having the time of our lives. And back in the day, school approaching was a nightmare. Not only do you have to, you know, get new clothes, for some reason get new backpacks, new pencils, new pens, like... Why not just keep the ones that you had the year prior and don't get new ones? Save you a lot of money. The clothes thing I can kind of understand. You know, I can I can get that. You know, your clothes that you had at the beginning of last year, probably dirty, probably not in the best shape, probably outgrew them, you know, depending on when you're going back to school. Um, and also, like, when you get older, when you're a kid, you're going to school, you get older... You know, you want a new fit. You want a new style. You want the best stuff. And not only just clothes, but like shoes and stuff like that. You know, I mean, you gotta look fly. I never was the flyest kid going to school. I was maybe not even fly at all. Not even like the flyest. Like, when when I'm saying the flyest, 
like there is a threshold or a level, a barometer, a meter of my flyness. I had no fly. I was grounded. I had, I, I had no fly to me at all. I was just a grounded kid back then, just shorts and t-shirts and, you know, that was about it. Backpack was basic, you know, shoes were basic, everything was basic for me, you know, that was just my experience, you know, going back to school, I always had to buy, you know, binders, I always had to be perfect, I had to have the three inch binder, you know, I remember one day, not one day, one year, I think it was in high school, where we had six classes, periods one through six, and my school would divide the periods from even and odd numbers. So one day, I would go to periods one, three, and five, and then the other day would be two, four, and six. And this was a way for teachers, schools in general, to get you to buy more things, more utensils, to make your learning experience, you know, that much more expensive. You know, they would say, oh, now you can't just have one binder. Now you got to have a binder for your odd odd periods and your even periods, you know, odd and even classes. And you got to have not just a binder, but you got to have full paper dividers, a, pe- a little pencil pouch, a three-hole puncher. You had to have all that stuff, but but times two, you know. The binder could be a little bit smaller. It could be like maybe a two-inch one, but you still needed to have two binders, and they made sure of that. I remember that as a kid. They would actually make you take out what you have And go on the syllabus checklist and make sure it was up to code. It was what they ordered, what they wanted you to get, and that's all you had. That's all you could get. And they would go down and pretty much be like, all right, what do you have? This is right. This is not correct. You got to go buy this. Got to go have your mom or your dad go buy this for you because we ain't providing that shit. It was crazy back in the day, school, you know, and, you know, I just get that. I know I'm I'm well out of school, right? But there is like a vibe that kind of, you know, swallows me whole when this time of year comes by. Like, I feel like, you know, I should be going back to school. I'm saying this as a man who's already graduated college that I need to go back to It's... It's just something in my brain that just has not gone away yet, you know? I don't know if it will ever go away, but hopefully it does, because it's just annoying, you know? Not something you want to feel. I don't know, but it's also like, a, like there's only one more third, no, what am I saying? One more third of the year to go, because we are in August. There's only four more months of this year. And then it's 2025. Kind of is, you know, you don't want to think about it too much. But, and I know, like, I I talk about the year passing by a lot. But I do also think that this is like a audio time capsule of events and points in the uh, the year that are just, we're just kind of going by, you know? And we really should, as a society, um, take a breath, stop, and just kind of, you know, think about where we are in the year and what's coming. We're in August right now. We're in the middle of August. And next is September. What's that? What's September have? Uh, Labor Day. October has Halloween, November has Thanksgiving, December has Christmas, and then it's over. Then the year is up. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's a wild, this is going to be a wild year. I can already tell. This is going to be a fruitful year. 
I don't even know what fruitful means. I think it just means eventful or like full. This is going to be a full year. Like a full, the rest of the year is going to be jam-packed, you know, for me, for you, probably a lot of people, you know. With every, every like interest imaginable, right, is going to have a killer end to this year. For me, I'm a sports guy. And what's around the corner? Football season. That to me, you know, football season is the staple, is like the, you know, the uh, uh, the the benchmark, the 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 starting point of the year is in its final stretch, you know, and it's my favorite time of year, if I'm being honest. Fall slash winter is my favorite time. It used to be summer. Obviously, I was just saying when you're a kid. Summer, you can just piss off and do nothing. You can just, you know, rot, play video games, you know, jump in a pool, go swim. Now, for for adults, you know, I think fall and winter is usually when people, you know, become a little bit nicer. They become a little bit more jolly, more seasonal, more tolerable, um, more empathetic. Of you, yourself, your peers, other you know, other people that may be around you, family members, everybody's a little bit more sincere. That's what I think. That's why I like it. I mean I mean you think about it, the country, I mean, like, is just happier, I think, in the seasons of giving, which are fall and winter in this country. So I just honestly cannot wait for like fall and winter just to immerse me in its hug of love and compassion and joy. I mean, I just can't wait. I know we still have a while to go. I know we're in the middle of August. But as the years pass by, you know, you're looking at the at your watch or at the calendar or at your phone, you see the date, right? And you see it's going to be today, August 15th. And you're like, wait a minute, didn't summer just begin like a week ago? No, nah, it already, it, it came and went, man. It came and went. It's it's wild to think about, but it, it it's not stopping. You know, every day, every every time, every night you go to bed, you wake up, and it's another day closer to the end of the year. Like, oh, it's bedtime. It's not just bedtime for you. Bedtime for that day. That day is gone. That day will never come back again. Unless you build a time machine. Unless you find some ripple in time where you can just travel back to one day and live that day for the rest of your life. Which, honestly, no one will want to do. Let's be fair. Nobody in their right mind should want to uh, live... Um, a day and redo that day over and over and over again. I don't see like any scenario that you can give me that that would be like, oh, this is a perfect day for me to go back and try to redo the day to where I want it. You know, I don't know. I just feel like you'll get you you'll drive yourself insane because it, the situations might change every every single time you try to redo that every little thing that you change will change the outcome in some weird way it sounds like like science fiction type shit you know how in back to the future where um like one tiny little thing that oh you want to go repair this or you don't want to you don't you don't you don't want this to happen well, what if you repair that and you make something else happen that's even worse or, or just as bad or if not, you know, catastrophic than what had already happened? All because you wanted to go back and try to redo the past. It's, it's weird to think about, like, how many of you people out there listening to this show would actually want the opportunity to, to go back in time? I think a lot of us would actually raise our hand and be like, yeah, I think it would be kind of cool to go back in time. I do think so. Um, but I, if I was to go back in time, I would not want to 
affect it at all. In fact, I do kind of feel like if I were to go back in time, would I be seeing like another me, you know, play out the events of that day? Kind of like in Back to the Future, like I was saying before. I think it's also, you know, a, uh, you know, I think they did it also in Avengers. Yeah, they did it in 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 uh, Endgame. That happens as well. And um, I feel like that would just be cool not to affect, you know, the outcome of that day, but kind of be kind of be like a fly on the wall and just watch what happened on that day. I would love to like go back in time, like further than like, you know, a couple years ago. Like, I would want to go back to like, you know, um, you know, the, the eighties or the seventies, like, you know, whenever like a famous band was like recording a, a great single, like queen recording Bohemian Rhapsody or, you know, something like that, you know, something monumental that means so much to the world, you know, or go back in time to see like um, Live Aid, you know, with Queen and all that, and what that would be like. Or go back even further and see like um, important dates in history, like um, uh, way back. I mean, like way back, like the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Like, what was that like? You know, if I could just be like an invisible fly on the wall. And just kind of watch that all happen. That I think that that movies and TV shows do a good job of depicting that stuff. But man, would I, man, I would, I would love to see like how it actually happened. You know what was actually said, and how it was actually passed, or documented. You know, or who's even document or uh, documenting that history as it as it happens. You know. Or even like further than that, I've said this before, like I want to see when those damn pyramids were being built. Like I don't believe one second that humanity made them. So, I mean, the only reason, the only proof, the only true, um, the true story that I think that you can get of who actually built those sons of bitches would actually be going back in time and seeing who the fuck built the pyramids it's crazy to think about but i do wish that i could do that 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 it was possible for me to do that you know i think about that a lot even maybe even before that you know um what was before the pyramids not much that we know of what about further in the future from the pyramids greece rome all that stuff. I'm also obsessed with history. So you can tell like I would go back and just want to see all these key events take place. How it went down. And and then compare it to what is actually written in history books and what's actually being taught. How how do we, you know, I mean, there's got to be there's, I mean, most recent history, like World War II, right, it has to be so accurate, so accurate, that there's like, there should be absolutely zero, um, zero conflict between scholars, journalists, documentationers of what actually happened in that day, because it's so recent compared to ancient Egypt, which is thousands of years ago, right? And like that, that not that that information, you know, for ancient Egypt has a lot of it has been lost to time and destruction, which stoinks. But you know, you gotta think that, man, only to know the full truth, only to know the the full truth. Of that civilization, of that 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 area of the world, Egypt. Wow, like I w- I I would want to go there, and I've said this before. I would want to go to Egypt. I do want to go, and I do not want to stay in a hotel. I do not want to stay at somebody's house. 
I want to sleep in the pyramid and absorb the energy from that pyramid and actually walk in that pyramid and find answers of why that was built. Who built that? Was there help? Who did it? More importantly, why was it done? You know, it's just my curiosity. I can't stop thinking about it. I don't know how the hell we got here from um, back to school era, back to school time of year, but we did. There's more things to talk about. Don't worry. I didn't just bring nothing to the table. Instagram is at it again. And it's not just um the ads, which we'll talk about, but there's a there's um a battle going on for your eyeballs on Instagram. There's a battle happening. A community that has been driven by viewership, engagement, eyeballs, algorithms, AI, all that. There's a community out there. There is a branch of videos. A lot of people are making these videos. I have been one to succumb to these videos. You know, and indulge, enjoy, gain gain entertainment by these videos. Muck bangs are the videos. And it, it can go for many, many, many genres um, of food. Would you even call food a genre? A different type of food? No, nah, I don't know what you would call it. But different types of food, right? Mexican, Italian, uh, American, uh, Asian food, Chinese, Japanese, you know, you know. But um, one that kind of crosses my my algorithm in my eyes quite a bit is not a type of food really, but a chain of food, raisin canes, and for some reason, all these people that do these mukbang. Instagram real videos of them eating the food. It's not really about the eating, but there's a thing now that you can't really just eat normal. And I know it's not, what I'm not getting at is people eating messy on purpose to get a bigger pop in their video, a bigger reaction. Like when they eat so messily, that the schmutz is on their face and on their cheeks. You know, it's not that. It's the over-the-top amount of sauce that is given by the Raising Cane's employees to these mukbangers. I mean, I've had Raising Cane's one time. It's okay. The chicken is not good. The bread is good. The sauce is good. Therefore, I feel like with Raisin Cane's, uh, you're really banking on the goodness of the sauce to make the chicken taste good. And that's it. Like, the, t- the chicken just tastes good. And that's okay. That's Raisin Cane's motto. That's their business, is the Raisin Cane's sauce. But for some reason, these mukbangers don't want just a healthy, decent, um, human portion of sauce. No, sir. They want a gigantic, large-sized soda cup full of raisin cane sauce. Now, first, you know, you, you, you might think I'm crazy, but no, it's actually true. These motherfuckers actually get gigantic soda cups full of Raisin Cane sauce and have it in their video. Why? Because it makes their video stand out. I, I'm a, I, I, I know how business is done. I'm a capitalist. I see your angle. I see what you're doing. You're going to get a lot of people to watch your shit. But I will not be one of them. 
And to me, that is a win for myself. And I just have gotten so annoyed with like every small little detail going down to the the sheer amount of raisin cane sauce that these motherfuckers need to have to dip fries and to dip pieces of chicken. And I can just imagine how much raisin cane sauce is being wasted for the pop of a video on Instagram Reels. It's quite unbelievable when you really think about it. Humanity has gone from building pyramids to making mukbangs. Now, I, for one, don't think that anybody that lived in the past thought that that would ever happen. That would be the peak entertainment of our society. And I've already admitted, I'm guilty. I have succumbed to these videos. They're wildly entertaining. But I do see what you're trying to do. It's so noticeable. I, I get it. You're, you're trying to get my eyeballs to look at your video, to then let Instagram put it into my algorithm. I fully am aware, and I fully, I fully, fully think, and this is not just me, but my brother thinks this as well, that Instagram is so, so invasive and so smart that even though you are on the Explorer page, what looks like you have so many videos or images at a single at, at a single glance of your Explorer page, I do think that Instagram has a technology in their app to track your eyeballs on the Explorer page. If you open up your Explorer page right now, you'll get like a, you know, 12, three columns worth of, you know, videos or images at a time when you're scrolling. Um, and like, you're thinking to yourself, like, there's no way I'm not clicking on anything. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not watching anything. I'm just kind of scrolling just to see. I mean, I, there is no real, any other explanation than, them being able to actually track your eyeballs to what you are looking at and then give you more of that in your algorithm. Like, I think that fully is happening. There, I mean, I've, I've run out of ideas on what it could be because I'm not saying these words. I'm not thinking them. And I doubt, I mean, if they can read your mind, that might be even worse than what I'm actually proposing here is them tracking your eyes. But... I do think that the eye tracking is is insane. I really do think that that is now a possibility of what is happening, especially when it comes to algorithms and your explorer page. I mean, I just don't I I, I, I there's no other explanation than that for me than what I can think about. I mean, I just don't think that, that that's possible. You know, if you're not saying stuff, you're just kind of scrolling. You don't click on anything, but yet you get more and more of a specific thing that you've been looking at and that you've been seeing. Then there's no other explanation. Instagram is, without mercy, watching your eyeballs and and allowing and gaining access to your camera. And for the most part, you know, I think the camera little, um, when you're using the, the front-facing camera, even any camera, like I think on Apple devices, there has to be like a little green light that appears that your camera is being used or your microphone is being used. With a microphone, it's like an orange one. But none of this is happening when I'm using Instagram. So this is probably happening without our permission in the first place, which is a big no-no, in my opinion, because then that's just like breaching on your privacy, trying to sell you or trying to get you to click on more things. And let's be honest, what the fuck? Why are people able to make a living on Instagram? How does that even happen? I get it that there's this new like subscription-based Instagram that you know, people are, I guess, now charging for to, to view specific 
images on Instagram. I didn't know that that was a thing until like recently when I kept seeing this bl- like purplish um um screen on my on my on my stories of people who I follow and it says, "Oh, with a little crown, a crown um icon that says subscribe now to view content." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> When the hell was this okay? When it, who okayed this? Was this all Zuck? Was this Zuck's idea? It, to me, it's just like, what? I mean, you already have it flooded with ads. Why do you need more money? You know? I don't know. I just feel like we have really lost human connection when it comes to this type of stuff. Yes, yeah, social media has made us closer than ever before. I could DM anybody I want I could DM um uh you know Matthew Stafford hey you gonna play today bro Cooper Cup you gonna play today Pukunakua you gonna play today that doesn't mean they're gonna answer it but I do have the ability to do that and you know with a hope and a prayer maybe they'll respond maybe they'll you know read it maybe just maybe but that is a possibility and a thing that you could actually do to connect to literally anybody that will allow you to on social media. But while the human connection has never been stronger, air quotes stronger than it is today, I do think that that has opened um, a realm of, you know, exposure that these companies now have access to and now can just expose you to anything that they want in order for you to hopefully, hopefully buy it. Now, I have not bought anything on Instagram. There's not one thing that I've seen that I'm like, yeah, I should get that. And I've been talking about this for a while, from fat t-shirts to male spandex to Ozempic to, um, uh, you know, uh, everything in the book to make you appeal or appear skinny. Now, I'm pivoting here. I've gotten the worst ad ever, I think. The worst ad. Um, so I've been on this fitness kick. I've been getting pretty fit. I've been going to the gym, been working out, been eating better. And um, now... There's this new ad campaign on Instagram where it's promoting AI. And one of the things, or actually one of the the, the 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 premise of this ad, the point of this ad to hook you into trying to get the AI is this is legit the pitch for you to get the AI. Here it is. Are you tired of planning your own workouts throughout the week? Have AI do it instead. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that, and I was just like, yeah, they're really desperate here. Like, this is a new low in terms of human capabilities and human laziness. Plan your own. Have AI plan your workouts weekly. I mean, I just don't understand now. Like, we went from, like, looking things up to solving math problems to now plan out your day? Your day? You think that AI is going to know you, your day, better than you do? Folks, I think that we have truly hit an all-time low when it comes to artificial intelligence. And what we can use it for now. I mean, I'm, I'm sick and tired of all the AI commercials that I see on TV as well. But this one, have it plan out your workout. And it's not going to stop there. You know, eventually it'll move to plan out your day. What you need to do. You have AI. You can have them plan it out for you instead of you. You know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like you have absolutely no control of your day or of your life. You, the liver of that life, has zero control over it. 
That to me is just wild. And the fact that these companies are going to make you a slave to AI, essentially they're saying you don't have it in you to plan out your workout. You can't do it. You can't. You won't. You're not going to. You're going to forget. Have AI do it. You know what that is? Immediately what I hear with that is doubting human capabilities and doubting yourself and saying, no, you can't do it. They're selling to you that you can't. You can't. Why would they do that? Why would they tell you that blatantly flat out, you can't plan your own workout schedule, so have AI do it? Because they want you to feel like you are missing something in your life. When in reality, you're not missing it. You can plan your own workouts during the week. You can do all this. But in order for them to sell their thing, they have to tell you and make you think, brainwash you, that you can't. Now, I have never really heard of Americans, people in general, being told flat out by companies that you can't do a basic simple thing like scheduling a workout plan or even like I said in the future it's just going to be plan out your day without artificial intelligence we can't let this happen we cannot let it continue we must reject it with our entire being if we don't reject this now it's only going to get worse. It's going to get, you know, more people might actually do it. And then, you know, those people will get lazier. And then, I mean, I just don't think that I would, I would never, ever want to admit to anybody that I use AI to plan out my day. And I can't do it by myself because I need AI to do it because I'm not a grown up or I'm not an adult. I mean, grow up, people. Do it yourself. Take pride in that. You know, when you plan something like that, when you get your shit together, when you fully lock in and you really look at what you got to do and you plan it out the best of your abilities and you see, I got to get this done. I got to get that done. I got to get this. And I got to go do that. And I got to grab this. I have to finish that up and then submit this and then email this. Per- when you actually set some time to look at that, do it, complete it, you get the sense of accomplishment that you actually did something, which is good for you. As human beings, you have to go through a day, right? Whether it be your job, school, whatever you do, right? And accomplish something. And not just like, you know, barely like, you know, barely start anything, you know, barely, you know, touch something, but like complete something, like have a sense of completion and accomplishment in order for you, I think, to have the utmost happiness in your life. Human beings need that. As small as it may be, or as even as big as it may be, accomplishment is key to your sanity and your humanity. And your purpose, I think, in society and, and, and in this world, it, it's needed. It is so vitally needed for your brain to get that every single day, that accomplishment, those endorphins of you actually did something good for you, good for others, good for a community, whatever it may be. And you finish it, you complete it, you did it, you need that it is so important and ai is trying to take that away from you even the simplest thing of of scheduling something out like like workout plans that could be an easy win for you that could be a self-esteem booster that could make you smile and ai wants to rip that away from you just absolutely rip it away saying saying nah you're you're our prisoner now you will never feel accomplished ever because we'll do it for you and you'll just have to do whatever you, you just do it. 
you know? Can't let them get away with this. This this ad to me was just like a wake up call like, yo. First they wanted it to use it for helping out with homework. You know, and it wasn't even that first. It was just like simple problems, simple questions. What does this mean? What is that? What does this equal? How do I do this? To what is this all about? To write me this. To summarize me this. To now plan my entire day. We have to stop. We have to stop. It cannot continue. All right, now I, I, I feel like I'm really bringing down the mood when I really shouldn't be. Because, you know, there's a there's a lot of cool things that are coming our way. And a lot of things that I don't really care about. One of the things I do care about, though, is actually a video game. Which, by the way, if you haven't noticed, at the moment, gaming is dead. It's never been more dead than right now. Truly. Why is it dead? There's a lot of reasons. I don't think I have the time to do it in this episode. Um, but I won't really delve into that right now. There's a lot of reasons of why it's dead. But there is one thing that I'm actually looking forward to. That I've never looked forward to in, in a day in, in my most recent life. Maybe for about like, oh shoot, like like 10 years. I haven't looked forward to this in over 10 years. And it's going to be Call of Duty Black Ops 6's Zombies. I am so looking forward to that, you have no idea. And I'm not a Zombies guy. I have not been a Zombies guy since Black Ops 1 Zombies. After that, I just kind of fell right off, right off a cliff. Boom, just no more. Didn't care whatsoever. Out. Now, in modern day gaming, full of cringe ass players that play way too much, that make the game not fun, that 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 ruin lobbies, that 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 just make everything just super sweaty, super competitive all the time. Where, you know, I just want to kind of chill. Eventually, I'll probably get better and want to play better, but for the most part, I'm, I'm chilling, I'm having a good time, and these fuckers are just ruining everything. They say hate the, don't hate the player, hate the game. With video games, no, that's not possible. It's the player that makes the game bad. It ain't the game. In video games, it is the player truly truly is i'm sorry but there is a clear clear cut evidence that this guy on this game is making it so i have less fun so i can hate the fuck out of the player in that situation i think that's totally um allowed but the reason why i'm really wanting to play black ops 6's zombies is because the fact that it is a PVE, you know, it's survival zombies, round-based zombies, that I think that Jesus Christ, after all this sweatiness from battle royales and extraction games and multiplayer, I just want to play this. Just with the boys and get as far as we can every single night. I just, I feel like this is like my bringing back, my, my homecoming party back to zombies. One, just because I'm so done with just playing against these loser, pathetic lowlifes that don't have anything else to do but play this cringe-ass game and be cringe as fuck at it. And then I just, I'm tired of it. I'm burnt out. I think this was like maybe uh, two months ago. Me and my friends dropped in the, in the game of Warzone and we came out of it. We lost and we were all just like, wow, I hated that hated it and we all agreed like this that was without even knowing without even knowing at the without even knowing like when we went in without even any pre like pre thoughts that was the final straw and i was just like no i cannot continue to do this now is it because i'm old possibly is it because I'm smarter 
most likely is it because I'm wiser? Absolutely. I don't need to do that. I don't need I don't need to add that type of suffering to my day-to-day life where I suffer already just from life stuff, you know? I don't need to add me dying in a game in like a millisecond to some loser who doesn't have a job. I don't need to add that. I don't need that in my life. And we all said it as soon as it happened. Like, I think I condemn COD. I think I condemn that game. Now, I've played other games like Halo. Um, That's pretty much it. As far as FPS games go, um, that one's a little bit more laid back, which I appreciate. But Call of Duty, man, I just, I, I, I don't know if I could come back and play multiplayer. I'll probably play multiplayer when Black Ops 6 comes out. But I'm really looking forward to the zombies in that for sure, just because of the anti-PVP. Because the players fucking, the majority of the players fucking suck. I mean, they just ruin shit left and right. Um, I just, I, <laughs> I'm so happy that we're actually getting round-based zombies in this game. I just feel like well, I, me and my friends are just going to go go after it on this and just try and I, I I really do think that zombies in this um Black Ops might actually see more players, more people playing it than like their battle royale just because of how I don't know, I just like feel like the battle royale is just like I don't know. It might be it it truly truly might be on its way out. I don't know. That's also another topic for another episode because I clearly don't have that much time to to really truly lay it out and what I think is truly going on with that market and with that uh um community. But um yeah, I just I I, I I've never been happier and more excited to play a zombies in Call of Duty in about ten years. I truly can't believe it. Last thing I'll talk about before I get out of here. Some D23 announcements that are... If you don't know what D23 is, it's like a Disney expo of like movies, television, stuff like that. That's coming out under the Disney banner. So that includes like obviously Disney, Pixar, um, uh, Marvel, Star Wars... That's all under Disney. So that was like pretty much their big Disney fan convention where they have like, like I said, announcements for all that shit. Um, Some things that kind of stood out to me because I I was not watching it as it happened, but I was following it on X and my friends were telling me about it as it was coming out. Things that are coming in the future within the next few years that got me either excited or completely, completely, completely excited disappointed and don't even give a shit i'm being completely honest one thing that's coming out that i actually somewhat somewhat care about is toy story 5 now you're probably thinking to yourself like why would you want a toy story 5 why i don't want a toy story 5 i didn't want a toy story 4 i thought that toy story 1 2 and 3 perfect trilogy Incredible story. Should have ended that way. Should not have had Toy Story 4. Now, Toy Story 4 was a great movie. I'm just going to say it was a great movie. Was it necessary? Absolutely fucking not. Nope. Could have lived without it. Like it. Enjoyed it quite a bit. Didn't need it. Truly did not need it. And I think that if you watch it, If you truly do watch Toy Story 4, you'll be like, yeah, it's a good movie, but was it necessary? Fuck no. Absolutely not. Now, Toy Story 5 is coming out in a couple years, and I gotta say, I mean, like, the nostalgia is there. I want to see it. I do. I for sure know that it's unnecessary as fuck. Like, that one should not, you know, that, that should not be made. I'm just flat out that movie should not be made. I know it's got my boys in it, right? Tom Hanks, Tim Allen coming back as, 
you know, Buzz and Woody. I like I I love that shit. I think that that's awesome. But is it is there a purpose? Right now in my life, I'm all about purpose, right? Does this make sense? Is this do, do, does the world need this? Do we really need this? And, and, and like I said, in a world where like making money is like the thing, and we you know everyone's gonna make a bag, and we need this. Do we really? Do people want that? I don't know. I'll be honest. I mean. Toy Story 5, just flat out that there's five of them now, is already a, a cry for help when it comes to we want money, we need money. Now, of course, this movie could be really good, you know, but I just don't know if it's going to, you know, if I will ever, like, come to the um, recognition that these two movies, four and now five that's coming out, even, like, should be a thing in Toy Story lore. I think that it was fine where it was. I think that, you know, it should not be, there should not be another one. Um, I That's just my thought. Um, on that, at least. Uh, moving on. Um, Incredibles 3 is announced. Incredibles 2 was good. Incredibles 1 is fantastic. Um, another sequel to The Incredibles. I mean, it could be good. could be not good. I wasn't, like, wanting any more Incredibles after 2, if I'm being honest. Like, after 1, I was like, yeah, give me more Incredibles. After 2, I was like, nah, you know what? I mean, it was good, it was fun, but I don't need any more of this family. I don't need any more of this uh, world. I think I'm done with this. You know, I mean, Disney's got no idea, so that's coming along the way. And they are also announced uh, Frozen 3, which is coming out too. And uh, what else? They announced that new um, Snow White movie, which, I mean, I never was a Snow White guy. I've never seen Snow White. I've never watched Snow White. To me, that one was for girls. Sorry, but I was more of an Aladdin kid, more of a Hercules guy. Um, more of a Mulan guy, and, uh, which one else was cool that that came out? Lion King, that was my shit, you know? Snow White, nah. Any of the princess shit, like, you know, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella, eh, Little Mermaid, not my shit, sorry. Just not my, not my thing. So, this new Snow White live action that's coming out, Starring Rachel Zegler, Gal Gadot. Honestly, <laughs> I saw the trailer and I'm like, all right. I mean, I guess this could be cool. But then again, I've never seen Snow White or or at least remember anything of Snow White. So this might all be like a new experience for me. So maybe this actually will be kind of cool for me because I've never really seen Snow White or even remember Snow White. All I know about Snow White is that it's a, it's a girl... Um, with like dwarves and like they're her friends, I guess. And uh, that's about it. I know that there's this evil lady played by Gal Gadot. I don't know what, what the relationship is with her and Snow White or why there's even dwarves or is there like a, like a flower or something? I don't even know, right? I have no idea. So maybe that this new movie could be cool for me because it would be a new experience that I would never, that I'd never even thought of seeing in the first place. Also, there's um live action Lilo and Stitch, which if I'm being honest, kind of a weird movie to, uh, to make live action to a live action remake, you know, kind of strange. Like, a movie that I loved as a kid. I really loved it. It was like one of my favorite movies growing up. But like not really like a heavily like beloved Disney movie. You know, like it, it's not really a movie that you, you know, imagine like Disney really giving a shit about it. You know, it ain't like it's like, uh, you know, Frozen or Moana where Disney really like loves that movie and fucking promotes it on everything. 
Lilo and Stitch was kind of like a one-off. Like, yeah, it was fun. It was cool. But then kind of went away with it. Maybe it's because it, like, missed, like, the social media era where people could, like, talk about it. And I think that there was music in it, too. So, like, you know, people can make, you know, videos or, or reels about it or TikToks. So if they do, you know, I mean, they are they are going to remake it. So now they'll probably hit that wave of social media to make it like a more um, mainstream movie in 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 today's mainstream. Because um, if you look at it, uh, Frozen, Moana, even Frozen Two were all like these big movies that came out in the social media era. So they were able to ride like a a second wave of publicity, you know, for one being like moviegoers and like, yeah, go see it to like videos, memes, images on social media that can kind of propel the movie. And I think that Disney is kind of seeing like, well, this one could be like, you know, a gem in the social media era. So we should probably remake it now that we have that, that we can. That's the only thing I can really think of. Like, what a strange one to remake, right? Um, but yeah, that was that, that one is 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 that one actually piqued my intrigue because I liked the first one a lot, and they showed like a uh, just like a small little snippet of just like a live action animated uh, Stitch, and I was like, that's kind of cool. I mean, he sounds like Stitch, he looks like Stitch, and yeah, I mean like. Am I going to be there, like, day one? Probably not. Uh, but am I going to watch it? Probably would. Uh-huh. Um, Star Wars um, sucks. I mean, th- this uh, this franchise is dead. It's so dead. I mean, this new series that's coming out is totally, like, un... Like, no, like, no one wants to watch this skeleton crew bullshit it looks like it's a fun time but i don't want to see that in star wars like i don't want to see like it's almost like a she hulk in marvel like i don't want to see that type of show in the marvel universe where things matter and you know it's it's superheroes and it's epic and there's fighting and like if you're gonna make something like that just make it its own thing you know, this skeleton crew is just Goonies, but in Star Wars, like I, I don't, I don't think that that anyone would really care about that. I'll, if I'm being honest, like we watch Star Wars for like the lore of that world and the importance that lore has to the stories and the characters that surround that lore. When I see this, like a, a show, just gonna take the piss in the Star Wars universe and go for just a galactic joyride with, you know, like an adventure with like kids and shit. A la Goonies. I'm like, ah, pass. You know, I don't give a shit. Uh, If I'm being honest, I I don't care. I mean, if people are going to watch this, cool. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a movie in the first place. And then they turned it into a series. I, I wouldn't be shocked, by the way, if it's like six episodes and they're all like 20 minutes long. I won't be shocked. That's probably what's going to happen. That way, 20 minutes, 6 episodes, that equals 2 hours. I won't be fooled if this is what happens. I won't be played. I'll see it coming. And it's probably going to end up that way too, if I'm being honest. Um, So, Skeleton Crew. Star Wars is gone. I don't care. Skeleton Crew could be fun. For kids, I mean, like, but who's, I mean, adults are not going to watch this. Come on. Let's be real. Um, What's next? Oh, probably the worst thing that I've ever seen. Well, maybe not the, the absolute worst, but again, totally unnecessary. This Mufasa movie, the, 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 the prequel to the live action Lion King that came out in 2018, I believe, um, is getting a, se- a prequel telling the tale, the story, the origin story of the true king before the true king, Mufasa. Simba's dead. Um, I don't think that this movie is 
wanted by any any soul that lives on this planet. Like, I don't think that there's one ever been like a thought, ever been like a, 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 um, a an idea, ever been like a want or an epiphany, whatever you want to call it, any, any crave or any, you know, drive or uh, manifest or nothing. There's no one on this planet that has ever looked at Lion King and been like, I want to see the origin of Mufasa. How did Simba's dad become king? Like, there's no way you can tell me that anybody has thought of that, wanted that, wished it, and now it's a fucking going to be a major motion picture. I just, I, I mean, I get it, right? You know, film is art. Film is storytelling. Film is beautiful. But this does not seem like it needs, it's a story, this doesn't seem like it's a story that needs to be told. You know, people who are majoring in film, who I've talked to, who I've even like delved into a little bit of film and like, you know, taking the screenwriting class and they always, you know, they were always like saying like, what is the purpose of this movie? Like, what are you going to bring to the table that is different? Sure, yeah, I mean like, you know, this is the story of Mufasa, right? I get it. But isn't it just going to be, like, similar to the story of Simba becoming king? In a way? Sort of? Probably? I don't know. It just it's, And it's just what? I mean, like, you already know what's going to happen with Mufasa. He dies by Scar. Spoiler alert, but fuck you. Um, I mean, I mean, I just... I, I, I don't... <laughs> I don't see the purpose of this, but I will say, even though I'm I'm super negative on a lot of these things, including this Mufasa movie, I don't think that the CGI looks very good, I'll be honest. I mean, the trailer definitely looks like a step down from the 2018 horrendous film, which, by the way, looked real, <laughs> right? Look, looked uh, pretty photo, photo, photorealistic. That, to me, was kind of the drawback and where I think the movie suffers is because it looks almost too real. You can't really, you know, I mean, it just looks like a fucking lion that talks, that can't really emote or express emotion, which, in my opinion, the uh, that's where the first movie completely fails at. But, um, I do know, I, I mean, I do think, I, I you know... The, the 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 lions and the lion cubs and in this one and all the animals kind of look like they can smile more, emote more, which is a good direction, a good start. But I still think that this story is just not worth telling. I mean, just it, 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 this just seems like it probably should not have been you know fully committed to and green lit. In the first place, if, I, if I'm being honest, like I just, I just don't really see like anybody really caring about this movie. Now, I could be wrong, right? It could make a billion dollars. I mean, the first or the the 2018 one, I think, is when it came out. Um, that one fucking made over a billion, you know. So what the fuck do I know, right? I mean, I I could be totally wrong on this. You know, people might see it. it actually, it came out in 2019. Oh, you're off. But yeah, I made over a billion dollars. But it was not a good movie, let's just be honest. Um, and I think that audiences are aware of this and know that these movies can be bad and not good and really forgettable. So maybe, I mean, this movie is going to have to have one killer story for it to, you know, have legs, I think. The story can be like gripping, emotional, and have like a good, you know, um, just be a good tale, then I think people would actually care about it. But if it's not, that's the only thing that's also kind of giving it, you know, a, um, you know, hope, I guess, because it is its its own story. So it has to tie into the Lion King, but yet it, can, it still, it can be its own thing. And, uh, we don't know a whole too much about Mufasa, the character himself. Um, so I think that even though it's going to be, you know, this is where the character came from, there probably isn't, like, a whole lot that they could do to completely ruin the character, but, you know, it's Disney, man. They'll find a way to ruin anything. 
I mean, look at Star Wars shit. You know. All right, that's gonna be it for me today, people. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Remember to find this. You can find this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube at Intelligent Moron with Alex Silva. Uh, new episodes drop every Thursday morning. Make sure to like, subscribe, rate, review, and do all that good stuff. And yes, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys next week.